Hi everyone, welcome to week one of personality psychology. Um, I'm excited to start working with you um, and this video goes with chapter one. Um, hopefully you've already watched the getting started video that talks a little bit about the mechanics of the course. So um, if you haven't, I encourage you to watch that. Um, I also encourage you to watch it on a higher speed. I, when I listen to myself, um, I feel like I talk faster than YouTube um, portrays it. Um, so uh, you can use that gear setting in YouTube to change it to one and a half or 1.75 or two, uh, whatever works for you. Um, writing assignments, one more thing I want to say about writing assignments is um, for the short writing assignments each week, I grade those largely on completion. So um, if you've answered the question, sometimes you'll have a lot to say, sometimes you'll have less to say. Um, say what you want um, and I'll let you know if it seems to be too little. Um, and I think a lot of times people are writing more, um, and which is fine, um, but I just don't want you to think that um, every everyone has to be an essay. Um, when I start grading in the week, um, I usually um, send out, there's a feature in Blackboard where I can click on it and it just sends an automated reminder to everybody who hasn't turned something in. Um, and so if you get one of those, just know that the tone is kind of cold. I have nothing to do with the message. Um, it's just an automated reminder. So, um, and if you've turned it in, you know, a, a few minutes before that, you know, then if you know you've turned it in, just ignore it. Actually, you could ignore it either way. Um, so that's that. Um, and then personality. So um, let's get started with personality. It's all around us. You know, whenever we're trying to explain why people are the way they are, why we are the way we are, um, that's what personality is all about. And so we're going to spend the entire semester looking at different ways of understanding how people are the way they are. Um, it's a fun class. Um, as far as I know, it's not a required class for anybody, so it tends to attract psych nerds. Um, I'm a psych nerd, so um, so if you are too, welcome. Um, and if you're not, welcome also. Um, but uh, we'll get to do a lot of really, I think, interesting things. So it's a fun class, but it's not an easy class. And I think sometimes people um, get caught up in like, oh, this is pretty easy. And then they get to the first test and it's like, wait, um, this isn't as much fun as I thought it was going to be. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, I try and teach the course that I would like to take. Um, and so I really don't lecture a tremendous amount about what's in the book. So um, you'll need to read the book, two different sources of information, um, and, then, uh, and then these video lectures. And then I'll put in some assignments that I think complement and extend what's in the book, but don't necessarily duplicate it. So, um, so that's where we're going. Um, the, uh, chapter one is very short. Um, it's very readable. I think the tone of the entire book is very readable. I hope you enjoy it. Um, it doesn't read like a really dry textbook. It's more um, a narrative style from Dr. Funder. Um, he starts out by talking about the psychological triad. The way that I remember that is with the acronym ABC. Um, so um, the A is for affect. It's another word for emotion and how we feel about things. Um, B is for behavior. So that one's an easy one. And C is for cognition, how we think about things. And so when you think about psychology in general and personality psychology in particular, um, we're, we're, we're using all of that information. How does it feel on the inside? Um, how are we thinking about it? And then how are we behaving? So you look at those characteristic patterns. Um, the definition of personality is, uh, is how those patterns are um, somewhat enduring across situations. So you don't act exactly the same at work as you do at home and as you do um, in other areas of your life. On the other hand, there are some patterns um, that, that would be what we would call your personality, some personality um, traits um, that go across that. When you think about something like, why do you love who you love? Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean what's your orientation, but just why do you love the person that you love or the persons that you love? Or if you don't love somebody, hopefully that's not you, why not? Um, and what is it about them that's different? You know, and, and are you aware of all of the factors that go into uh, what makes somebody somebody you'd want to hang out with? Sometimes we hang out with people who are pretty difficult, right? I have some complicated friends. I'm sure you do as well. Um, but I still enjoy their company, right? So um, what is it about that person that makes them likable to me? And then somebody else might say, whoa, that person's an acquired taste. I don't, you know, I'd prefer not to, um, not to interact or not to hang out with you when you're with them. So, um, so those are the kinds of things that we're going to talk about this semester. Um, um, the book talks about how um, great strengths can also be great weaknesses. Um, an example that I could use for myself, and you can probably think of ones of your own, um, I tend to be really vocal at meetings, right? I go to a business meeting. It's, I'm not necessarily like that in my personal life, but in business meetings, um, you know, I'm one of the first pe persons to like raise your hand, ask a question, whatever. And as I've gotten further into my career, I've been more willing and not less willing to do those things. Um, so the, the upshot of that is I go into every meeting thinking, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm just going to listen. Um, and then I find myself being that person again. So 
it can be a strength to ask those kinds of questions. It can also be a weakness. Um, sometimes the weakness can be a strength. So um, I think throughout the semester that will pop up again and again um, throughout the uh, throughout the chapters. Um, uh, um, the book um, talk, you know, the, the chapter talks about the plan for the book. Um, so I'd encourage you to skim that so you can see where we're going. Um, keep in mind that um, when he talks about the five different basic approaches or paradigms um, that we use to study um, personality, um, trait and biological are by far and away the most dominant ones in the field right now um, and, so, and have been for quite a while. So when you're writing your paper in this course, I'm gonna ask you to evaluate somebody's personality using the trait approach, also using the biological approach, and then selecting one of the other um, basic paradigms um, to use um, to, so that you can see how each paradigm or each basic approach asks and answers different questions about personality. And it's helpful for us to have all of them, right? They complement each other, they don't contradict each other. So um, those kinds of uh, things will come up as we progress through the, um, through the textbook. Um, he also says that there's not one big theory. Um, and I think, um, you know, I, I'd like to emphasize what he says about how um, different theorists over uh, sort of the history of psychology have said this is a theory of everything. You know, Freud said this is a theory of everything. Um, Skinner, theory of everything. Um, and a theory of everything um, might be good at, at a really high level, but it's not very good at, um, at specific things. And we're talking about specific things and individual differences in personality. So we don't really want one big theory of everything. What we want are different theories that, um, that give us information and help us to understand different aspects of personality. And when you think about going to a restaurant, um, if you go to a restaurant that only has 10 things on the menu, they're probably really good at those 10 things if it's a good restaurant. Um, if you go to a restaurant, on the other hand, that has a 15-page menu and it's got 20 things on every page, like they can't possibly be excellent at all of those things. So really, what is their theme? Um, and so, you know, I like to think of, of these different theories as, um, you know, we, we don't want that 15-page menu that, um, that, that is the theory of everything. What we want are some specific ones. We want um, a theory that will help us understand different aspects of personality. Um, okay, wrapping it up, um, uh, tips for success. You know, I, I said this in the intro video. Um, I encourage you to skim the chapter first, read the chapter summary. Um, actually, read the chapter summary first. This is uh, the plot spoilers are actually pretty helpful when you when it comes to reading college textbooks. So, um, read the chapter summary, skim the chapter, read the chapter summary again. Um, the last thing I want to say is being familiar with those key terms will really help you. It'll help you in the course. It'll help you in your understanding of personality. It'll definitely help you on tests. Um, knowing the the um, the terminology, knowing the vocabulary of any field that you're studying um, can be tremendously helpful. Um, because it helps you to organize things. So I encourage you, um, even if they don't work their way onto a study guide or onto a quiz or a test, um, to look at those key terms. And if you don't understand them, go back and look at them again. Um, uh, I think they're all uh, pretty useful um, in knowing sort of just the, the basics of personality psychology. Okay, that's it for today. Um, uh, I'll try and do a video like this um, every week. Um, and have a great week. And as always, um, if you have any questions or I can help you with anything, let me know. Thanks, bye.